Hey everyone, welcome back to my shop. My name's Aaron. Today's video will be part one of a two-part series where I install the Dorian Quick Change tool post to my old Colchester Master 2500 lathe. Now before I get started on the video, how about we have a quick look at the mail that came in this week and I got two letters, one from Greg from My Little Mule and he writes, Hey Aaron, thanks for the offer to swap stickers. Here are a couple for you, looking forward to getting yours. All the best, Greg, My Little Mule. Thank you Greg, they turn up safely in the mail mate and um, I'll walk over to the board now and put them on the board for you. Now, the second letter that I got into the shop is from Tom. Now, Tom's down in, uh, he's in Australia. He's another uh, YouTube machinist and maker, and he lives in Tasmania. So you may remember Tom, his channel used to be called Tommy Gun Machining. He did a rebranding there a while ago, and he calls it Tom Makes Here, which I think is a befitting uh, name for what he does in his channel. Go and check Tom out. I'm sure you've seen Tom's videos. Uh, one of his most popular videos recently is he made himself a rotary brooch and um, I believe he sold a few right across the world. So well done, Tom. Tom's second sticker is from his second channel called Waz Makes Here. And I think that channel more or less looks at um, tool restoration and stuff like that. I know he's done a vice restoration. So uh, nice one, Tom. Thanks for your stickers, mate. And I'll place them up on the board now. Before I get started, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to point out that these tool posts here, they're not cheap, but what they are is very high quality, very sturdy, and uh, really, I believe, value for money. Now, to purchase mine, I went through a company called Live Tools here in Australia, and, and I bought these. This isn't a sponsored video. Okay, I bought this tool holder. However, Artie did look after me. So, Arthur, if you're watching, thank you, mate. Now the reason I went to a dealer is because Artie took the time to actually, um, you, you gotta remember I'm in Melbourne and Artie's company's up in New South Wales, Newcastle. It's about a 10, 11 hour drive from here. Right. But to help me out, Artie got on Zoom and we did a little live cross and uh, he went through the catalog with me. And going through the catalog, uh, you know, was really a good way of doing it because Artie explained to me the different sizes and I'm really glad I did because Artie put me onto this one here, which is a um, QITP35N. And I'm really glad I had that discussion with Artie because I nearly bought the smaller one. And now when I look at it fitted to my lathe, I think, thank God I spoke to Artie. And Artie, if you're watching, mate, you, <laughs> I'm really glad you pushed me to get this size and not the small one. It would have looked stupid on my lathe. Now, you may ask, why did I buy Dorian tool post holder? Well, I'd forgotten about Dorian. I was looking for a quick change tool post holder. I was going to go with the Multiflix system, and they're the system that I had installed to the lathes where I used to manage another trade training center. Very good tool post, very high quality. But I watched Curtis's video from Cutting Edge Engineering, and uh, he sparked my interest. Now, I had seen Dorian before, but I'd totally forgotten about him. And I've seen them on Haas CNC lathes, now tool room lathe, so uh, not the um, slant bed lathes like the ST10, you know, ST15, ST20, something like that. I'm talking about the TL1, TL2. And once uh, Curtis sparked my memory, going, oh crap, you know, I want one of these. I'd forgotten all about Dorian. So thank you, Curtis, for jogging my memory. Now let's talk about the installation process. From the very onset of removing this old tool post, I went the complete wrong way about it. Um, I started disassembling the old Colchester tool post, which was a quick indexing type, but my quick indexing had stopped working a long time ago before I'd got the lathe. Uh, this old lathe is a, comes from a high school. It's in fairly good nick. I'm pretty sure it's only a teacher lathe, the teacher used, however, um, it was still very rough around the edges and that's common in high schools because a lot of teachers don't get the time to do maintenance or keep an eye on the machine but hey if you're a bit of a tyrant as a teacher you can make sure the machines are kept in good order because you get the kids to clean them after they use them. So I went about this the totally the wrong way trying to remove this old tool post. Um, I've tried to disassemble 
there were dowel pins that I had to drill out to try and disassemble it. And I even went online and picked up a, a schematic drawing of this and it still didn't point to the fact that it only had two dodgy bolts underneath the compound slide holding it on. So it wasn't until I totally removed the compound slide and turned it upside down and looked at it in my vise, I've gone, well, aren't you an idiot? There's two cap head bolts here that all you had to do was undo those and the whole thing would have come off. I've got the compound slide in the vise with some soft jaws in here. I'll take you and I'll zoom you in a little bit closer. And we've got a, we've got a couple of uh, cap head bolts in here that are holding it down. So fingers crossed, let's go. Let's undo these. The Allen key is a quarter. And I like what I'm feeling. Oh, thank you, baby Jesus. I've got it off. Now, the flip side of all this is I didn't really need to pull it apart. I could have just, uh, knowing what I know now, I could have just unbolted that and kept that entire tool post together. Now, once I'd removed the old um, tool post, I had some problems because the Dorian is designed to either fit an American lathe or a UK style European lathe. Now, American style lathes have a T-nut that holds the tool post on. European lathes usually have a round boss plug that inserts up underneath the compound slide with a thread in it to install it. Well, it's just my luck that the Colchester had neither. It did have a big old um, screw down through the center, but it was a wrong thread. The problem here is that's a 5.8 UNC hole. Um, the rod that I need to install has to be 5.8 uh, UNF. Okay, I think it's 18 threads uh, per inch. I need to make a bush to go up in there, so I've got to pull this apart. So first thing we're going to do is just crack this little grub screw here. All right, and then this should undo. Once that's undone, you can see the grub screws, the locking screw, the handle will slide off. All right, that will need some oil later on. There's a key way in here that needs to come out. I'll just gently lift that out of the groove, got that. Now there's two bolts here to come off, or two cap head bolts. That can come off now. There's a little flat washer in there that needs to come off. Okay, little spacer, that will unscrew now. Okay, I'm removing the Acme thread here. This is the compound feed screw. I'm just taking that out of the brass nut. Nearly there, there we have it there. It's in quite good nick. So you can see here that the brass nut is free to come out, but the giveaway here is you've got a like a keyway built in here, or slot, a slot I should say, and there's a grub screw up in there. So once we get this grub screw out, I envisage that should just pop straight out. There we have it there. There's our nut. And I'm gonna leave the gib in, I'm not gonna pull it out. I might have to pull it out later to get it back in. There's the capered gib. And there we have it. I've got it apart now and uh, I can now start thinking about how I'm going to machine this. So I'm going to machine a bore a big hole in here and then bore through again and then make up a plug to go in there which will bolt in my uh, tool post bolt for this. So. Back to the drawing board, what do I do? Because I wanted to, I, I'm not going to cut a big um, T-nut into this. I don't think I've got the meat in the compound slide. 
So I turned to CAD and I modelled the entire compound slide up. I, I wasn't too worried about it being 100% accurate, but I wanted it 90% accurate, all right? And I modelled that up in, in my CAD software and then worked about designing the plug, okay, the boss plug that inserts from underneath and what I would have to do to install it, all right? Now, to make the plug, I didn't have a lathe. My lathe was pulled down, so I had to take the components, the compound slide, down to my place of work where I teach, and during my off time, I machined up the plug on one of their lathes, which was kind of good because I had the DRO to help me and that sort of thing. Okay, 40.01 at the back here. Yeah, 40.02, so a little bit of discrepancy. I'm fine with that, I can, it's gonna be an interference fit, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Finished up my sizes, I need to drill and tap now. I'm just gonna come in with a center drill, then a pilot hole, then up its backside. Um, don't have the right size drill, I had to go to a metric imperial. This is actually a 5.8 by 18 TPI tap to fit the tool post. Let's go. I'm going to feed this flood coolant. I'm just going to start it, see if it will start. And stop the lathe. Right there. Revert. I'm going to reverse it out. There we go. I've got a really good start on that. It is a bit tight. I'm a little bit undersized with that drill size, but I think I should get it. Okay, so off camera I took it out of the chuck and I actually put it in a bench vise and tapped that all the way down. Um, I'm just going to part that off now. You can see the indicator mark where I try to line the jaw up with the correct location again. It may be running a little bit untrue, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to part off a little bit prouder and then come back and face when I'm clamped onto that bit there in the three jaw chuck, all right, to get my accurate um, length. Right, here we go. should be 27 mil long. I'm going to part off at um, 27.5. Use a bit of coolant here as well. Now this is just a high speed steel blade. I prefer to be carbide. We don't have one here at the school. A few moments later. That's what I didn't want to happen. Radio, I took that over to the coal cutting saw and cut that off. Um, it doesn't cut that parallel, that, that saw we've got. It's, uh, how would you say, it's not the best of quality. But anyway, I'll get this back in the chuck. And I'll just face that off now.
Well, there we have it, we're finished. Um, that's a little boss that's gonna come up under the Colchester. Um, I'm pretty much on size, I'm quite happy with it. I'm about 0.3 on the face before I could get that to clean up, but that's okay. I want that a bit shorter because I don't want it hanging out because it will knock on the underneath side. There's my nice thread. Okay, and that's a, a high speed tap that I bought on the weekend. Um, they're supposed to be good quality, I'm not too sure. Made in the EU, but um, I'd prefer my Sutton, but beggars can't be choosers. Alrighty, let's uh, start work on the cross slide. Well, that concludes part one of today's job. I hope you found it interesting. Um, part two will be up next week on the same time on the Monday. Uh, don't forget my live streams that I've been doing um, every Thursday in Australia, which is uh, USA Wednesday. Uh, make sure you jump in. I've been interviewing USA YouTubers, so I think you'll enjoy that. Um, this week in the channel, I've got DJ from Fox, Foxburg Fabricoblin. Um, next week, the following week, I'll have Steve from uh, Test Your Design. Uh, Steve's also on Instagram as well. So I look forward to seeing you in the live stream. Jump in and say good day. Love to have you. Uh, that's midday Melbourne time every Thursday. However, depending which time zone you're in in the USA, it could either be 5 o'clock in the afternoon or 8 o'clock, depending if you're on the east or west coast, okay, at night in the evening. Thank you, and I'll see you next week.